So back in the shop we go. It's been a while since we visited the shop. And uh, you know what? Today I got bored. And uh, what do you do when you're bored? Well, you rebuild a shotgun. Everybody knows that. So that's what's happening today. we are going to get set up. And uh, I'm going to take this old shotgun. I'm going to give some uh, a new look. Give it some Make new it look. look pretty again. It's got years of use and abuse. And it's time to give it uh, some respect that it deserves. So that's what today's project is. Is we're going to take this shotgun. And we're going to strip it down. And we're going to inspect all its components. Not that, you know, I'm going to just inspect it because I got it apart. Functionality wise, it works flawless. It's just about cosmetics here today. So that's a Kui Model 84. Uh, Canadian made. Um, these things have a reputation for being indestructible. These are in Canadian closets all over the place. A very, very common shotgun. Break action. Functionality is just perfect. You can't, this is a flawless gun. Can't, the, the design of it is just superb. This one here uh, is chambered in 28 gauge. So this gun here, let me back up a little bit there. So this gun, I guess you could say uh, probably would be, be classified as vintage there now because it's about 75 years old. Um, I grew up shooting this I gun. Involved in hunting, she developed an interest in uh, grouse hunting. I gave her my old shotgun. And this is officially her shotgun. So we're going to take care of it a little bit more so today uh, it's not only going to be the bluing i've blued guns before so I, i've done this before and we're also going to refinish the stock but today i'm using a product that i've never used before this is perma blue by birchwood and also the kit there's two kits one is the bluing kit, one is the uh, gun stock kit. Walnut stain and oil and all this kind of stuff. Again, I've never used these products, so maybe once I'm all done with this, perhaps I'll give my two cents, my thoughts on the product, okay? And, because I've blued before, but not with this. So, I'm gonna go get myself a coffee. I'm gonna come back, I'm gonna re-rig the cameras, and now we're going to start taking stuff apart. Okay, first step of the process. We all know how this works, right? Three basic components. Now, uh, looking at this gun, you'll notice there's a, a chip here. This gun was refinished somewhere sometime in the past. I kind of vaguely remember refinishing it when I was really young. That's why uh, this is a varnish. And that chip was there for as long as I can remember. Sanded it down so that it's uniform. And then duplicate this side here. Sand this side down to match this side. That way there at least will be uniform. I'm thinking that's probably the direction I'm going to go with it. the mechanism I'm looking at it and my first thoughts are the springs are all very very stiff they haven't lost their strength over the years you see any chips or any metal fragments anywhere uh, indicating that parts have been grinding themselves away everything appears to be right where it's supposed to be 
Start with the degreaser. Let that sit in here. And all my goodies get cleaned up. Okay, the cleaning of the uh, the gun parts is going quite well. Cleaner is uh, interesting. It's uh, it it seems to really pull the old grease out. It it's um, it doesn't feel it doesn't smell like a, a strong degreaser, and uh, it certainly doesn't have. Uh, I'm using it without gloves. I don't know if you you shouldn't or not. I'm not going to say you should. I don't see any problems right now. Your parts are supposed to be clean in water after a few minutes of the degreaser. Okay, that's it for the degreaser. The cleaner degreaser. Now for the rust remover. Okay, so unlike the uh, cleaner degreaser, the uh, rust remover, the, it does have a caution to wear gloves. And I can't seem to find any uh, latex gloves. I am obviously out of them. So, I'm going to do the next best thing. And it's, I'm going to use caution. Which is why I got the... Uh, a piece of wire because I can hang it and as I can I can work it and of course well I got uh, some water I can wash my hands so I'm going to use an applicator for this part of the process Here's a look of uh, the receiver. There's untouched. This is just cleaned with the degreaser. And there's the side with the rust remover. Okay, let's do an update. We're going to shine on it now. So what I've done is after using the rust remover, 
and following the instructions, you seen what the breach looked like. And I, to me, it looked like it was okay, but you know what? In the back of my mind, I was like, it wasn't quite the way I want it. And uh, so I went one step further. I took it and I stuck it on the wire wheel. This is the product, the result after putting it in on the wire wheel. Now it's clean. Okay, I'm down to the barrel just the last piece now the barrel is going to be a little bit trickier because I can't rinse it here in the garage so I'm gonna to have to blow it run into the house and rinse it in the bathtub underneath the water running water in the bathtub and the barrel I know from past experience from blowing when you use these little kind of swab things when you do a large surface you can end up with a blotchy finish because you're swabbing a small area now the kit does include a sponge which is awesome so now the thing is the last piece i have about half a bottle left because i accidentally tipped the bottle i lost a bunch of stuff and it, thank god i have a blanket here because it absorbed into the blanket but uh, the way i'm going to do the barrel is I'm gonna pour all my solution in here I have plenty to do it and uh, I'm gonna soak up the sponge give it a wipe real fast take off go into the house and rinse it off and then uh, it's gonna be a minimum two applications I do have the breach all done so I'm gonna mimic the color so i'm going to do two applications but if it's not the right color i may have to do a third one right so that stuff that's all stuff you don't know until it happens so let's get to it okay it's a do or die kind of thing got to do it Full coverage, very important. Get all the cracks and whatever. As you can see, I'm not messing around and kind of have to get her done kind of thing. All right. Just like that. Okay, I'm off to go rinse this off. By the, I only got have about a minute, right? For according to the directions, it's one minute. Basically, as far as I'm concerned, it's all about not letting it dry. You want to rinse it off before the solution dries. Is what I'm my take is on it. Okay, round one was successful. There it is. If I take the breech and I put it next to it, I don't know if the camera's picking it up right, but it's not dark enough, right? Which is expect to be expected. But round one worked out quite nice. So now it's time for round two. I've already polished it a little bit with the steel wool. And that kind of bl helps blend in the colors because it does, no matter what, you're going to have a little bit of blotchiness. And the oil on your fingers can affect stuff too, right? So... These are all things you have to keep in mind. And I did a little bit of a polish like that. And away we go. So um, now it's time for round two. So I'll bring you back on once I got round two done up. And uh, maybe it'll be round three. We don't know. We'll find out when the time comes. Okay, hang tight. Okay, I'm done. With the bluing, that is. So I did three 
uh, coats of bluing on the barrel to match the breech properly. Uh, the second coat, once I rinsed it off and dried it off, compared against the breech, it was not the same color. I did a third round and it looks very much exactly the same. So I got everything laid out. I'm going to pan, give you a uh, tabletop shot of my parts. And I'm going to say that this will probably, well, it will, it will conclude today's video. Because uh, second, we'll save the rest for uh, as part two. So in part one, we disassembled, we cleaned, we stripped, and we re -blued. So we'll save, part two will be the refinishing of the wood and uh, the reassembly and then we'll do a final obviously a final overview and i'll give you my thoughts on the products right so let me get the camera down here i'll pan and once i'm done panning i'm going to take all my parts and i'm going to coat everything with oil and that's very very important any kind of oil will work like i'm in the shop i'm going to grab whatever's underneath the workbench i'm going to put it in my uh, little parts container full of oil I'm gonna fill this with all my small parts put it in there and just let the oil saturate into that steel the barrel everything gonna coat it right and just douse it with oil okay so let's get the camera down here and give a pan